commercials I've ever seen was years ago. They had that Heinz ketchup. I like ketchup on my french fries. And you remember how they, they, they would get it out and they'd turn it up and it, they, were, they could see it. They, they were looking at it. They could see it. But it just, it, 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 and they were going, expectation. You remember? And they'd sing that song and hear it come. And that's the way I, I thought this morning. That's what I saw. That's why I wanted to see. I saw this in my spirit. I could literally see that ketchup bottle. I hadn't thought about that in years. I could see that ketchup bottle, Brother Gillis. That's some good stuff. And I don't know if it would be good on that fish or not, but it might be. So why am I talking about expectation? Because, see, this is exactly what this word is about this morning. More than anything else is, number one, about the word. Remember what they said back to the foolish? Oh, no. And I don't mean this, I hope this doesn't sound prideful or arrogant, but you, you can't have what I've got. You've got to get it yourself. And I can't have what you've got. I've got to get it myself. I can't come to you and say, hey, uh, uh, will you pray for me when I've not prayed myself? I can't come to you and say, hey, can you give me the word you've got when I've not been in the word myself? Do you understand what I'm saying? There has got to be an expectancy. There has got to be something on the inside of us. And there is called the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God will quicken our mortal bodies. He will quicken our minds. He will quicken our souls. Glory be to God. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad today that God didn't leave us alone? He hasn't left us here without help. He hasn't left us here without a comforter. He hasn't left us here alone. He hasn't left us here to the will of the devil. Praise God. He has given me and you the earnest of the Spirit. Praise God. The Holy Ghost. The one that I get up with in the morning. The one I go to bed with at night. The one who reminds me of everything. And quickens me and says, hey, you need to do this. Or hey, you need to go here. Hey, you need to go do this. Or you don't need to do this. That's the Spirit of God. People call it their conscience. I call it the Spirit of God. Somebody give Him praise. I've got others that I could show. But I want to encourage you today. And there's five things that I want to show you. I think many of you, I'm preaching to the choir, a lot of you know this. But the only person that can bring change in your life is the Spirit of God. I tell you, I just got back from Nashville. I was in a vet conference. And I was listening to all these things that all these people were trying to do to help. You know, there's a lot of vets that have a lot of P PSTD, post-traumatic PTSD, I'm sorry. And, and, you know, and but the problem with them, they're in trouble. The, the reason that they're in so much trouble is not because they need to be counseled. It's not because, but they need God in their life. They need to be born again. They need to be sanctified. They need to know that they're loved. They need to know they've been forgiven. They need to know that they're not alone. They feel like they're alone. They've been abandoned. I know what I'm talking about. And this is where I want to speak today. There is a great shifting right now. There is an incredible shifting that's going on in the earth. Incredible. And it's happening even as I'm speaking. And it's going to get greater and greater until the Lord comes. There's a great shifting. This is something that God is doing. And I read today, or I should say I didn't read. I looked at something last night. But, you know, I don't necessarily agree with everything that I see on the Internet. But I do know this. I do know that God is going to have a remnant of people. The Bible says that He will. The Bible says in the Scripture that one out of two will be raptured. Or five out of ten. This is right along with what I'm just preaching. One out of two. Or five out of ten. Somebody says, where'd you get that, preacher? There'll be two in the field. One will be taken. One will be left. There'll be two, he said, grinding at the mill. One will be taken and one will be left. There'll be two in the bed. One will be taken and one will be left. And the Bible goes on to say here there were ten uh, virgins. Five were wise and five were otherwise. Amen. But my point is, is that there's a rim that you and I, I believe this morning... Or a, a small remnant of people. A group of people. A, a people that, that love God. A people that I, I don't know about you, but I want to be in the presence of God. Do you want to be in the presence of God? I believe you do. And to be in the presence of God is, is key to this hour. To want to be in the presence of God because He is separating in the earth. There is a great shift going on in the earth. Listen to me. And this remnant, this remnant is what I want to call... God's remnant. God is separating unto Himself. As a matter of fact, 
He says all through the Scripture to come out from among them. Be not partakers with them. Be ye separate, which means to be ye holy, which means to sanctify your life. You and the Spirit of God, you can't do it. The Spirit of God can't do it unless you're willing to work with Him. But you can't do it without the Spirit of God also. You've got to have my God. He can do it immediately and sometimes a long time but there is a great separation that God my God I feel God now there is a separation going on there is a move of God going on don't you remember the rich man and Lazarus there was a great separation there was a great rift that he couldn't cross over into Abraham's bosom and that's the way it is in the spiritual realm and that's the way it is in the earth there is a separation there is a divide don't you remember in the old covenant oh I should say the old testament when they were coming against Moses Kor and Dathan and the earth opened up and everyone on Moses' side, he said, get on this side. And everyone on Cor and Dathan's side, get on this side. And the earth swallowed them up whole. And they went down into hell, the Bible says, straight down into a pit. And I'll tell you right now, I'm glad that I'm not going to hell. I'm glad I'm not going down into the pit. That I've been washed by the blood of the Lamb. That we're obeying God. That we're doing our best to serve Him. And I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you today to get on the right side of the cross. To get on the right side of Calvary. To get on the right side of God. To be ready. To be able. And be looking for the return of our soon coming King. Our Lord and my God. Somebody shout Amen. And Savior Jesus. Jesus Christ. God said to me, I have told the world, I said this, and it's come back, I have told the world to be ready. And He said, I have not spoken in secret. What does that mean? It's in plain view. I said, God, what does that mean? You told me this. I've really been, I said, God, what, what does all that mean? He said, well, first of all, He said, when I said I've not spoken in secret, He said, my gospel, I've given you the gospel. He even told him when he was alive, everything that I've done, it wasn't done in the corner. It wasn't done in secret. Everything, he said, go ask them that heard me. Go ask them that saw me. Go ask them that know me. Go ask them that followed me. I've not done anything in secret. I've not done anything in the dark. I've not done anything that you don't know about. I've not allowed you not to see or to hear or to understand. I've opened your understanding. I've told you exactly what is going on. God said, I've given you the gospel. He said, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness unto every nation. And then he said, shall the end come if you believe it. Help me preach in this place and give our God a hand clap of praise. And then you know what? The world, no, they don't come to church. Actually, the problem is the church has to go to them. Don't you remember the time when Pilate, Pilate had, had just come back, he had just rode in. And they came to Pilate and they said, Pilate, the Jews need to talk to you. The Sanhedrin needs to see you. He said, well, tell them to come in. He said, no, they won't come in. He said, we have to go out to them. Because it was an abomination for them to come into a Roman's house. He had to go out to them. Why did I say that? Because I want to show you something. Why, why is it that the Lord has told the world to be ready? Because He is showing the world in a different way. He is showing the world through trouble, through signs. Through all that's going on. And they're even saying, hey, something's just, watch this, it's not right. I don't know if you've been watching. You know, he said even the beasts of the field die and the fish of the sea, he said, they're taken away. And this is why, if some of you have even seen it on the news, and you've wondered why that happened. The other day they said that all these whales, never ever has this happened. This was just last month, beached over, I believe, off of southern Australia, just one after another after another. And, and one of them was so far out of sync where they shouldn't even have been. It was a female, and it was just beached up on the thing. And that scripture come to me. Then another thing that happened the other day, they found a bunch of dead animals, a bunch of birds, thousands, I'm, I'm sorry, not thousands, but hundreds and hundreds of them that have just fallen out of the sky dead, and they're trying to figure out what's going on. I know what's going on. Jesus is telling the world, I'm getting ready to come back. And the only thing that's going to live, everything else is going to die. The wicked are going to die. The sinner's going to die. Those that are backslidden aren't going to make it. Those that, that, are, that are devil worshippers and living in sin and doing everything that he said not to do. I know that's a hard word, but it's, a, it's the gospel. But those that are ready, that have made themselves ready, those like you and I, praise God, that are watching and praying and looking and hollering and shouting. There's a lot of people in this life that aren't close to God. They think 
are. They may believe they are. But I tell you right now, where are they? If they're close to God, then where are they? I don't see them. Where are they? Show me where they are, Lord. Show me the ones that are close to you. But the ones that are far off, let me go to them. Let me sit down with them. Let me point them to God. Let me tell them that Jesus is on the way. Amen. And This is what you and I have to do. I have not spoken in secret, but God said, I've shown you in plain view exactly what is going on and exactly what I'm getting ready to do. The Bible said there'll be a time of trouble as was since the world ever again, never has been or since or before or any other time. There'll be a time called a time of Jacob's trouble. The church will be gone. The church will be taken. The church won't be here anymore. The remnant believers will be taken out of this world. So why do I come in here every Sunday? Why do I come in here every Wednesday? Because I have an assignment. I have something that I need to tell the church. I'm responsible and so is this man. We're responsible to feed the flock of God. That's my job. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring it every Sunday. I'm going to seek the face of God. But I want you to know one thing. The coming of the Lord is in plain view. And I think what the problem is with so many people, they're like Lot's wife. And God warned us, I'm talking to somebody, you better hear me. He's just like Lot's wife. And they're on their way out, and they're on the outskirts. And they're being delivered, even as I'm speaking. And you know what? But there's something on the inside of them that still longs for the things of this world. You better not. You say, where does that come from? Because the Bible says if you, if you love this world and the things in this world, the love of the Father is not in you. And what happened to her? What happened to her is she was like salt. She was thrown out and trampled under the foot of men. I hear somebody, well, my God's a God of love. He's also a God of judgment. There's a flip side of the coin. You know, let's, let's rightly divide the word. Let's see what he says in his word and where we need to be standing on the day that he comes. We need to be making sure that we're standing in, in the right place. Like I preached last week about Paul. If he don't get in that basket, his name was never changed from Saul. If you don't get in that basket, if you don't get in that place that you need to be in, if you're not ready when he, he arrives, show, my God, I want to be ready, don't you? That's, that's what I'm living for. That's, what I, that's all I understand in this hour. I fear God, church. I don't know about you, but I don't like the burning fire myself. I've been burnt one time on my finger. I didn't like the feeling of it. The Bible goes on to say how that God has revealed to mankind what is happening and what is about to take place. How is He doing that? Number one, through His Word. Have you ever seen somebody that's running from God and they start out in the church and God sends people to them and God's preaching to them, God's ministering to them. They might not even be in the church. He might send somebody to them outside the church. Let's say this starts in the church and they're preaching to them and they get under conviction and they run and they're outside. Then God sends somebody else to them and says, Hey, listen, you need to slow down. You need to think about this thing. You need to get your life right. And they mock that. Then all of a sudden, then God, He puts up barriers in front of them. He puts up troubles in front of them because He's trying to keep them from going the wrong way. This is the way God works. This is the way that you and I need to understand how God is. God begins to work in ways that you and I may not understand because He's not like you and me. He's trying to save that person because He loves them a whole lot more than the church could ever love them. Amen? Because He is God. And then they get out there and then all of a sudden then God says, "All right, then if that's not going to work, then I'm going to pull back my hedge and I'm going to let the devil have you for a season and see if that will change your mind. And the Bible says some say by fear, pull them out of the fire. Amen. And some of you today, you need to hear the word of the Lord that God is speaking to us today. He is saying I have revealed to mankind what is happening and what is about to take place. How? Through His word, number one. Number two, He's revealing it through dreams. Bible said in the last days your old men will dream dreams. Thank you, Lord, and your young men shall see visions. And upon my handmaidens I'll pour out of my spirit in that day. Somebody asked me the other day, what do you think about women preachers? I said, well, all I can tell you is you want to argue that point. I said, I'll just tell you what God said. He said there's neither Jew nor, nor Greek nor male nor female, but all are one in Christ. God can't find a man that I tell you right now he can use a donkey, he can use a woman he can use anybody he wants to use you hear this preacher, all this bunch of religious jargon gets on my nerves sometimes he can speak, and he is, he's speaking through dreams listen, he's speaking through visions 
He's speaking through revelation. What's revelation? Revelation is the person that wrote the Word of God. The Spirit of God inspired men who wrote the Word.